Hey guys, welcome to StuffFox. In this video, I'll show you how to sign up with Google Domains as well as explain all the features and options that you can set. In addition, I'll explain why buying a domain with Google is the best option out there at the moment. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing if you want to learn more about Google and Apple applications. Let's begin! So the first thing we want to do is go to domains.google Log in with your Gmail account. You already picked up my Gmail login credentials because I was signed into my Gmail account on this browser. As you can see, I have no domains yet. What we're going to do is search a domain. You can either click the find the perfect one or get a new domain. Both links would lead you to this page. This is where you want to search the domain that you're looking for. We're going to search for trendingstonks.com. One of the good things about Google Domains is it shows you comments on why your domain may be a good one. It takes into account what people can easily type and remember. And just like other domain providers, it shows you suggestions on related words that you may want to consider. But it separates that from the specific words that you're looking for. So if I'm only interested in trending songs and I want to see what are the available endings for that domain, then click All Endings. Over here, it gives you all the available endings that you can purchase, including .net, .org, and all the other things. Now, if you want to buy the specific domain that you're looking for, click the Add to Cart, and you can add more as you go. In this case, I'm only interested in that domain. Now, another thing that I like about Google Domains is it gives you this privacy protection for free. You always want to have that on just to protect your info as stated over here. We don't want any custom email for now, so we'll skip that. Then let's click Checkout to proceed. And the next page is asking you for your information. So type your name, address, and phone number over here. Once you're ready, click Save and Continue. Then it will ask you for your payment info. Fill in with your credit card info. And if you have any promo code, click it over here. And then click the Buy button. We've now successfully purchased our domain. Under the domain overview, it gives you a few details you need to know. If you have an existing website already and you just want to point your domain to that, click this. And it's as easy as putting your website URL over here. In my case, I'm going to forward my domain to my YouTube website. Keep in mind that forwarding a domain may take 48 hours to take effect. So enter your web URL over here. I'm going to put my YouTube. And then there are more options by clicking advanced options. You can make this a temporary or a permanent redirect. If you don't plan to build anything on that domain, then click permanent redirect. For path forwarding, click do not forward if you only want it to always forward to a specific page of a website. Select forward path if you plan to have the same pages on both domains. For example, if someone types your about page, it will forward to the about page of that forwarded website. For forwarding over SSL, I always just turn it on because it works for HTTP and HTTPS. And once you're done, click the forward button. If you decide to stop forwarding the website, click the stop forwarding button here. The next thing we want to do is click security. Turn on the two-step verification for your Google account if you haven't done it yet. This is linked to your Gmail account, so if you've done it to your account, you don't need to do it separately for Google domains. But if you haven't done it, I highly recommend that you do it. Let's go back to domain overview. If you scroll all the way down, you'll see the current price that you paid for it and when it's going to renew. If you do want to change the renewal setting, click change renewal setting. This leads you to the registration settings. You'll see your contact information here, the privacy protection being on, as well as the domain permission on who has access to this domain. You want to add a user under domain permission if you plan to co-own or transfer the domain to someone else. For auto renew, Toggle this off if you want to remove the auto renewal since your domain renews every year. You do get a 30 day email notice when your domain is about to be renewed. By default, your domain is locked. You want to unlock this if you are transferring the ownership to someone else. Otherwise, don't unlock this since it prevents anyone from transferring ownership of this domain. If you do want to transfer this domain, in addition to unlocking it, you'll need the auth code to transfer it. Click the auth code here and it'll give you a code to transfer the domain. But since this domain is less than an hour old, the auth code is not accessible yet. On that note, keep in mind that when you buy a domain, it could take up to 60 days before you can transfer a domain. I run into this issue with my clients sometimes because they want to buy the domain, then transfer the ownership within 60 days, 
and you can't. This is also not specific to Google domains. And lastly, you only want to delete the domain if you pass the renewal point. Otherwise, leave it here if it has not expired yet. When it's time for you to configure a website on this domain, click DNS. You want to modify the name server if you want another provider to control the DNS settings. You can do that by clicking Use Custom Name Servers, add the name servers, then click Save to apply it. I'm going to put mine back to Google Domain Name Servers because this is just being forwarded to my YouTube website. For DNSSEC, it's currently on. Leave it on since it protects your domain from DNS spoofing, which in simple terms, it means redirecting your domain to a malicious website. That's an oversimplification, but that's an easy way to understand it. For registered hosts, you only want to modify this if you have the actual IP address of your name server. Otherwise, you can always just leave that. For synthetic records, this is mostly used for domain forwarding, which we already set from the start. For custom resource record, this is where you want to set your text records, CNAME, A records, and more, which are settings that you want to modify when linking your domain to your website. If you watch some of my videos, I've talked about CNAME and A records in the past. If you're finding value on this tutorial so far, please help me out and click the like button. Next, let's talk about website. Over here, I already showed you that you can stop forwarding your domain, but if you want to build a website, click build a website. Then it will give you a bunch of hosting providers such as Wix, Shopify, and Blogger, and more. Now you don't necessarily need to use any of these if you're hosting your website from Google Cloud Platform, Bluehost, or any other hosting platform. But if you're using any of these hosting provider, if you click it, let's say Bluehost, it has an option for you to sign in and link your Bluehost account. This way, if you don't know how to set up your DNS server, then they take care of that for you. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is reports. Since I forwarded this domain to my YouTube page, it doesn't give you any report. It only gives you an activity report if you've set up your website using the previous website option that we talked about. For email configurations, there are two email configuration options here, which is get Google Workspace and email forwarding. For email forwarding, you can create an email alias without signing up for Google Workspace. You can create 100 email alias and forward those to your personal Gmail account. And since it's an email alias, you can only receive email from that email address. Let me show you how it works. Click add email alias. Over here, I'm going to put info. Now this will create info at trendingstonks.com. And then I'm going to forward that to my existing Gmail account using stopbox01 at gmail.com and then click the add button. Once you've done that, it will send a verification email to your personal Gmail account. Then log into your Gmail account and you'll see the verification email over there. Once you've verified it, all the email from that email alias will get forwarded to your personal Gmail account. The only thing is you'll have to reply using your personal Gmail account as opposed to the email alias that you created. If you want to be able to reply using that email address, you need to sign up for Google Workspace. Since you bought your domain from Google Domains, Google gives you a 30-day trial on Google Workspace. Other domain providers don't give you that. Of course, this could change in the future. So if you want to try it out, click Continue Payment, add your payment, and then it will set it up for you. If you want to learn more about Google Workspace, here's my video on that. If you also want to learn how to host your website using Google Cloud Platform, check out this video. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helped you. Leave a comment below if you have any questions.